Sean Kerry. Yeah, Riley. I don't know how in the world they got. It has to go 10 yards. Yeah, Riley. I don't know how they got the press conference. It's actually Justin. The game's going to be over. The Patriots. Well, we can't leave it. We can't leave here. Oh, and the Cotties would have a two-step. Oh, you know, you know, what's that? I lived in Austin. I could do a step in Kimberly. <laughs> I'd like to see him do a little two-step in there, Cotty. It's coming at you. It's called Bobby Womack's song. I could. I could. <laughs>
tri-state area just doing straight blues type of gigs and yeah. um, so when the A&M deal was not going to uh, come into fruition we settled out of the deal and yeah. in the interim we were doing it we were hosting a jam at Manny's Car Wash the Blues Club in New York City yeah. so we ran a couple of Sunday night jams with my band because we'd kick off the night and we'd end the night so we had somebody come in uh, uh, Mark Herman with his recording unit and we recorded the four sets over two yeah. Sundays and that started off and eventually the title be, then became close to what Mojo said was, a, sort of a rock band influenced by blues, but not by any stretch of blues band, more like a rock band. Just a little little uh, history. There was a deaf lady that lived on the floor above Manny's car wash, and then uh, my friend Brendan Cohane from Boston College, class of 93, lived the floor above her. Okay. And was he the one that complained all the time? No, he did not. He did not. Okay. But, uh, yeah. They were getting citations. No. Oh. Yeah. But uh, Buddy, I mean, God bless Buddy, right? Buddy Bums, yeah. Buddy Retired in, in Hawaii. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. bad kid. Well, Buddy, I, I know Buddy from the days of Lone Star. We actually got to play a couple times with Lone Star. He's a real deal. He put together some amazing bills, and he knows music. So if you were playing it at Manny's, there's no question. Yeah. You had some credit. Well, we bump heads all the time because he's far more opinionated than even me. And, uh, oh yeah, ridiculously and opinionated. He, you know, he's, yeah. He's, and he'll 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 not even go. Okay, I understand what you're saying. He'll just say no. It, that, it's his way, or that's it. It's, you know. No, no. And, and you know, you know, when I talked to Buddy Fox, he was like, "Yeah, I put together bills with Freddie King, BB King, Muddy Waters." Yeah. Timo Walker and you know like Zeppelin all on the same fucking bill. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's pretty fucking kooky, but like there were cats out there like that and Bill Graham, you know, like, I mean, like he was one of the real deal promoters out there, and you know when he put together Manny's, I mean, like he booked the best of the best. So, I mean, there's no question about it. It's a fun place. Yeah. What was it like to to be on the road with Cheryl Crow? Well, the sex was great. Yeah. <laughs> hey now. Who is it, Daddy? Jim across the like, fuck yeah, um, yeah. 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 No, actually, that's what, that's what uh, what's his name? Uh, Kid Rock claims, because uh, Howard Stern asked him, well, come on, who was better? Uh, uh, Pam, Pamela Anderson? Right, right. The other one, or Cheryl Crow? And he said, oh, by far, Cheryl Crow. So I'm going to hear by what he said. For real? That's because he wanted to record a Yeah, buddy. Wow. Problem, problem. But no, uh, it was great. I mean, um, you know, when I think about all the people that we had jammed with, not even open for it, but had come on our stage, from Levon Helm to Eric Clapton to yeah. Emmylou Harris, 
to uh, uh, Elton John. I mean, people like that jumping up on our stage um, and, and just getting to do things with people like that. And it's cool because some of it's surfacing on YouTube now. You see the, when we did um, um, Pale Blue Eyes, a Lou Reed song, we have Emmy Lou sitting in with us. And then we did The Wait, and we had James Taylor on backup vocals. We had Levon Helm up there. We had Emmy Lou Harris, Jacob Dylan, uh, Rami from the Jacob Dylan band. And Steve Winwood, I had to give up my solo for Steve Winwood. Uh, um, Gladly so, right? I, you know, but so those are the kind of things, and, and to be to go all over the world, from Israel to to uh, um, to New Zealand to Singapore, you know, just, just every, you know, we got to play everywhere. How many years did that trip happen? Uh, it started. Uh, it was it was just under five years for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. we knew each other beforehand. We started writing yeah. together beforehand. So you were sleeping together before that. <laughs> I, I, I was cleaning her house, vacuuming, getting her coffee, you know, stuff like that. She claims that I'm the I'm the best roommate she ever had. That's cool. That's cool. You wax the floor with your ass, whatever. You do. <laughs> Fix that whatever it takes. Not without my boxers, though. Yeah. 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 That, that, you know, they have to be classy. Yeah, <laughs> high breakout, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was a blast. Now, what I what I enjoy about your playing, whether it's on the, this guitar here that we're seeing, or the resonator that you got over here, what is that guitar you got there? That's a a piece of shit, cheap ass Chinese made in China uh, oh, resonator <laughs> resonator guitar. It's funny, I really hate it, but it's been on almost every gig for the last 10, 12 years, and uh, everybody always comments about it. I was telling you earlier, I'll have some, if I have some of my vintage guitars out to show. You expect somebody to go, oh, that 335, what year is that, whatever. Right, right. They go and they go, what is that? Yeah. Go, well, that's a, that's a $169, you know. Yeah, uh, for the pawn shop yeah. piece of shit <laughs> from Cleveland. But, but I, guess, yeah. I, I, guess it, I guess it does what it needs to do. You know? Right, right. But you play some decent slide. Well, thank you. And where are your, where are your influences from, and, and where, where is that coming from? Because... Um, well, slide is, it, it's, it, it's hard to say. I guess um, for slide, uh, my favorite of all time is Ry Cooter. Yeah. Uh, more than even the, the greats that came way before him. Um, I guess Dwayne is, is a little bit of, a, of an influence as well. Even guys that are not known for slide, the way they play slide, like Rory Gallagher. Um, there's a, a melodic sense. The two British guys that play melodically and very differently, and n nobody ever thinks of them is George Harrison, who's the first seed that was planted yeah, in me course. wanting to pick up a guitar. And Jeff Beck, who he hasn't, I don't know if he ever picks one up, but played some of the most brilliant uh, uh, melodic things on a slide guitar. You don't yeah, think of something yeah. like that. So sometimes it's off the beat, beaten path of what you think of slide players. Of course, there's so many great Delta players. You know, starting when you Bob say Johnson. that melodic, <clears throat> you are very melodic. Well, thank you. Slide. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that, I mean, like, that, that is something to be said, and we've got a lot of musicians in the house who are applauding here. But to be melodic and not just jerk the guitar off. Yeah. Well, there's some great guys right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that means right? Right? Sure. To be melodic and, and not just, just jerk the goddamn thing off. <laughs> yeah, the two guys right now that are just so inspiring. I mean, I can't even begin to fathom how they do it is, is Derek Trucks and uh, Sonny Landreth. Yeah. You know, and they're both extremely melodic, extremely uh, musical. And it's not just about Mike and the slide around. There's right, some right. players like that. And it, if it works with some people, that's great. But, um, you know, I like to see guys like that where they get it really into the music. And, and, and I know and Derek, like, and Derek listens to everything. I don't know, I don't know yeah. Sonny well, but Derek listens to everything. And has always been a, you know, drinking through the the fire hose to, to put that back out. Yeah. So what are you drinking through the fire hose? Well, I listen to a lot of different things. I mean, I'm still listening to stuff in the 60s and 70s. And, you know, uh, my influences are definitely more from the rock guys that got from the blues guys. And they were the ones that turned me on to the Three Kings and Otis Rush and, yeah. and Funny Guy and, and Hubert Sumlin and, you know, of course, Muddy and Hal and Wolf. Uh, but, you know, I listen to a lot of things, like lately I've been listening to a lot of the young Roots bands around from, from the Head and the Heart to Brandy Carlisle to uh, yeah. the Civil wow. Wars to yeah, uh, the Lone Bellow. Yeah. And one band that I just can't keep, uh, can't stop talking about is Lake Street Dive. And uh, <laughs> uh -huh. I just saw them the other night for the second time and I like them. So, I mean, I listen to a lot of different things. Actually, when I need to relax in a car and when the traffic's driving me nuts, I just 
try to find straight jazz. Just, really? you know, jazz for me. Yeah. For some reason, it just relaxes me. It just puts me in a certain mood. Now, are you a guy who loves the horn lines? Like, a lot of cats go. When I was, yeah. young, when I was younger, I was sax players. Sax yeah. players. Not really so much jazz, but guys like Bobby Keys. You know, and King, yeah. and King Curtis. Oh, those, yeah. those two for the lines. Oh, uh, one of my best friends is Jerry Javon. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Javon, like yeah. the groove master. Justine over here must know Jerry Jamont, right? right? Come on over here, baby. <laughs> uh, you're not so homely. Uh, what you in <laughs> she, she speaks New Englandese, by the way. She does. Uh, she she's does. a Berkeley grad. You want Sparkly? Uh, yeah, right. uh, now, tell me about your, your influences. Well, my biggest influence is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, oh, oh yeah. And, and, and Chad Smith does a lot. I love Chad for, Smith. Uh, Chad uh, plays... Every benefit for a right turn that I that I help, and uh, you know uh, he's he's a great guy. I mean, recovery means a lot to him, and, and that's something that I'm working on. Like you know, but Flea is a bad man. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who who else other than Flea? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm into the '90s grunge scene and uh -huh. alternative rock scene. It's funny because I'm in the '90s, so I watch Jenna Jenna Jameson from the '90s. <laughs> <laughs> And this stuff is great. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Friend, and you just got married. We're going to talk about that. Well, I mean, I just got engaged. Yeah, we're engaged. Yeah. I thought you were yeah. 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 saying, I was like, I I was with him at Sears when he got that. Oh, <laughs> nice. Thanks. Oh. Thanks. So, we have plans to this thing? I have no idea. We don't know yet. Maybe in the fall. He's just going to straighten his ass along, isn't he? No, I think, no, I think she's going to straighten his ass along. That's how it works. That's how it works. Oh, my God. I, I'm sorry. I didn't really That's okay. It. Yeah, it's, it's all good. It's, it's all, all good. good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you can have a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a Shepherd from Soundgarden. Okay. And Tim Comerford from uh, Rage Against the Machine and, and obviously. And uh, I grew up listening to Funk stuff and Paul McCartney, of course. Mm -hmm. so. Well, who got the fun? Who got the fun? <laughs> That's what I want to know. You know George has got the fucking fun. Well, of course. George has got the fucking fun. I've hung out with George. And he's got the fun. Yeah, oh, that, he's definitely got yeah, the fun. Yeah, he's got the fun. There's no question about that. And I kissed Bobby Bird date one night, and oh, yeah. he had the fun, and he had the fun. Oh, everybody and had the Frank fun. Everybody had the fun. <laughs> everybody had the fun, right? Right. <laughs> oh mercy! And you get, you get me some fun. I, I got a little fun going on here. to go and um, you know we started writing as a band on that album and we're continuing on for the next album and we had a great keyboard player playlist on the last album John Ginty and I played on his album so we started to get together right with him so the next right. next album's underway and uh, I think hopefully by January we'll have at least half of it in the can cool. and get the rest done um, before the end of winter and uh, we're trying to see if we can get a release for Europe and um, <clears throat> in the spring when we go over, because we usually go over for a couple of months. Japan looks like it might happen, which would be the beginning of April. We come home for three days and then go to Europe for two months, and, and then come back here, and hopefully get an album released by the end of the summer or fall here. Good deal, good deal. Well, you have a fantastic talent. You have an amazing rhythm section, and you seem like a family together. Like every time I see you guys. Oh yeah, you put you put three people in a van for for sixty thousand miles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, real close. 
Yeah. Get to know or you every little bit. living shite out of me. Like, <laughs> one the other. But like, y'all seem like you're tight and it's beautiful and the music is beautiful. And I can't thank you guys enough for coming to the Cardi House. And you're always welcome. That's a wrap, people. Let's get a little dicey for a minute.